Come with us as we take a full walking tour of Sandals Grenada, which boasts some of the most unique room types and resort innovations in the Sandals portfolio. Plus for its size, it punches above its weight for choice of both pools and restaurants. So we'll help you navigate around all the key highlights of the resort, as well as a comprehensive review of our room and why we chose it. So come explore with us. We start our tour at the Lover's Lagoon Village and Duck Pond where our room was located, which is at the very back of the resort, but we will circle back here at the end of our tour to give you a comprehensive review of our room type. As you might be able to tell, I filmed this tour first thing in the morning. However, do remember to check out our highlights video where you will get a feel for the ambience of this resort once everybody is up and around. So first up, we arrive at the South Seas Pool, complete with its swim-up bar, where you will find the first cluster of eateries. Starting with Dino's Italian Pizza, and is the only eatery open in the daytime after breakfast on this side of the resort. But open until late morning is the Italian Cucina Romana, which was our go-to most mornings for breakfast next to which you will also find Kimono's, the teppanyaki and hibachi style restaurant. Opposite which you will find the South Seas Bar, which serves swim up drinks in the daytime and again with entertainment in the evenings, perfect for heading to the most popular restaurant, Butcher's Chop House, the American style steakhouse. Which borders the main driveway to the resort and the main through fare between the two halves of the resort. On the right you will find the Sandals Loyalty and Travel Lounge and then on the left you will find the Departure Lounge complete with showers, perfect for guests like us from the UK who will have a late departure after checkout but still wish to make full use of the resort on their last day. And now passing through the reception where you are met at check-in with cold towels and a glass of bubbly, we move through to the Pink Gin beachfront side of the resort but not without first saying hello to these guys. Firstly in the corner you will find the Red Lane Spa. And straight ahead you will find the Living Room, the multi-purpose entertainment space. But first on the left, a man desk for daily activities and restaurant reservations. And on the other side, the gift shop and photo shop. Circling past the Living Room, which we will come back to, you will find our next cluster of restaurants where up the stairs you will find spices the caribbean restaurant with its great outside terrace open for breakfast lunch and dinner and then underneath soy sushi and then our personal favorite cafe de paris patisserie open from early until late before heading to the far end and the beachfront to neptunes the mediterranean restaurant open for dinner and I'll go to for lunch most days due to its fabulous beachfront location. And then doubling back on ourselves, back towards the living room, we head towards Le Jardinier, which along with Butch's Chop House, is one of the restaurants which requires a slightly more formal dress code. This French restaurant is open for dinner, but also a great treat in the mornings for an a la carte breakfast. First up, we have the Pink Gin Village Pool, complete with its unique feature of a sunken fire pit lounge area. And then on the right, the open air living room is the entertainment hub of the resort with pool tables, karaoke, live performers, and full blown shows and cabaret. And round the corner, you will also find the Tipsy Turtle English Pub, which is also next to the weddings office and excursion desk double back to check out the pool and its unique sunken fire pit lounge this is the quieter of the two pools as does not have a swim up bar but you can get walk-up drinks and pool deck service from the living room bar but now we head past the italian village and cut through the pink gin village to the beachfront now you can walk along the beachfront path but wanted to show you an area many guests will miss 
Here you'll find ornate gardens and bridges, which are a great backdrop for photo opportunities, and where you will also find two towers. One on the left here, overlooking the beach from. But if you cross over this bridge to the higher block, you'll be rewarded with a much more panoramic view of Pink Gin Beach. And best of all, most people never ever climb up here, so you'll often get it all to yourself. Though this does illustrate that if you are staying in the Pink Gin Village, you need to be in the lower beachfront block to get unobstructed beach views. This block behind does have more elevated views, However, need to be aware you will see the rooftop of the building in front of you. But cutting through the block, we now come back to the beach path where you can now see the various piers from which to watch the sunset, which we will follow up to the end of the resort. So remember, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you check out the others in our Grenada series. And we please ask that you hit that like and subscribe button. We really appreciate your support and helps us bring you even more content like this again in the future. But now up ahead, on our way to the end of the beach and the water sports center, you'll find two great gazebo options. Perfect for either a destination ceremony, as being at the far end of the beach tend to be a little bit more private, a bit more practical to walk to without having to trudge through the sand. And this one can also be used for private candlelit dinners as well. However, now heading away from the beach, we head towards the Italian village where on the ground level you can see some of the swim up butler suites. And this village does tend to boast the best rooms if you are looking for an ocean view, including these one bedroom sky pool butler suites. But for now, we continue our tour, crossing back over the main driveway to reception back into the South Seas village where we started. Here you will find a mix of the one bedroom butler suites with here on the left, the infinity edge pool suites and below on the right, the grand rendezvous suites with private pool sanctuary. Both perfect if you're looking for your own pool, a little more privacy or perhaps celebrating a special occasion. But as the path now comes to an end, we approach the waterfall river pool to a series of pools and waterfalls cascading down on multiple levels. Coming down the hill, the path has brought us full circle back to the main South Seas village pool and swim up bar. But not first without taking a little detour to check out the waterfall river pool suites. Now these are not swim up rooms, but offer an alternative and more affordable option as offer a same level of privacy as each block only has a limited number of rooms. But now cutting back onto the path where we started, we pass more of the grand rendezvous suites with private pools. Back towards our room at the lovers hideaway village. But before we take you on a room tour, we will take a little detour here on the left to the Red Lane Fitness Center. Now all Sandals gyms come well appointed with both fixed weight, free weights and cardio equipment. But I was pleasantly surprised to see the unique touch of a rowing machine with a great view out to our room. Following the path outside the gym, you come to both the gazebo and a covered pavilion. The latter, I believe, is used for yoga and both potentially for photo opportunities for any ceremonies. However, suspect could not be used as the actual main venues, as was the through fare to both the tennis courts and scuba pool. But to be fair, this resort is definitely one for beach ceremonies. Now we booked a luxury category room and we'll say that all the entry level rooms at this resort were of a very high standard and very little other than the name and location of the room block. The bathroom was spacious and very light as benefited from a sliding panel window into the main bedroom, plus being on the upper level, a skylight and then round to the WC, a further window, which is something the ground floor rooms do not benefit from. And although we did not get room service, still had our fully stocked bar, 
with wine, beer and soft drinks. And the room was plenty spacious. Again, being on the top floor benefited from a vaulted ceiling. And our preference is always towards the balcony, which was a good size and came complete with a soaking tub. And we found this location to be very peaceful compared to, say, those rooms that look out over one of the pools. Now, our room and access path did back on to the perimeter fence of the airport. However, this was not an issue. Flights were very limited, mainly in daytime hours, and flight paths did not cross over the resort. Frankly, we never noticed it throughout our whole stay. And coming down into the pond of the Lovers Hideaway Village, you could see the ground floor versions of our room. But it is worth noting, these do not have a separate entrance on the other side and are accessed by the patio doors at the front, which we felt made them feel dark and tunnel-like. And continuing round to the left, to the last section of the resort in the hideaway pool area, this seemed to be a consistent feature of the ground floor rooms in the South Seas Village. So something to be mindful of, unless you are specifically looking to book one of the walkouts to benefit from direct access to the pools. And as the name implies, this hideaway pool area was another great, more secluded location yet connected conveniently down this path directly into the centre of the South Seas Village. Which concludes our tour, which we hope you have found useful. And don't forget to watch our highlights video in our Grenada series for more the atmosphere of this resort, or alternatively watch one of our other destination videos here. But thanks for watching and see you again soon.